Hi, my name is uh, Ibrahim Naji, and I'm the CEO of Real EDU, which is a uh, education technology platform, and that is the sector that I'm working in, and I'm currently based in Dubai. The way I decided to get into this career path was, well, I would say entrepreneurship in itself is a type of career path, and the way I found myself in that kind of startup ecosystem in that sector was that was kind of the only alternative that I had, right? So I, I wasn't really a, a, I was a good student. Um, that wasn't really my thing and I couldn't excel in school. So I needed to find new ways to excel. And that's, that's kind of, that's really how I got into entrepreneurship. And that's really how I got into kind of knowing myself a little bit and knowing what I'm good at and not good at. And so I realized that me selling stuff, me creating stuff, um, was a strength of mine. And that's really how I decided on getting into entrepreneurship and what ended up being uh, entrepreneurship within the education space. Uh, what help and support have you have needed on the way? You know, always, always try to surround yourself by supportive individuals. Uh, it's tough sometimes. But no worries. Um, so always trying to surround yourself by supportive individuals. You know, the entrepreneurship is not really for everybody, right? So always trying to find like-minded individuals that maybe work within the same sphere or same ecosystem. Uh, you're going to face a lot of naysayers and you know a lot of negative stuff. Um, so just try to look away from all the negative stuff by again really just surrounding yourself with with. Uh, a specific group of people uh, that help you push forward and that's really I, I guess that's that's the most support I've needed right it's not funding it's not uh, you know sitting down with experts it's really just a, it's really just been supportive people and that's really it's gotten me a, a long way what skills do you need to do your job I, I, I need to th th I guess the, the main skill that I need is I need to be able to solve problems Right, uh, it's, it's not a specific skill, so it'd be solving problems across the board, right? Whether it's this design oriented or tech oriented or sales oriented or you know venture capital oriented. So I, I, I as as CEO of a ed tech company and a couple of other companies, I need to be able to solve problems, um, and that's really the main skill that I've needed to do my job. And one of the challenges of your job. Look, the challenge is in more or less any company or any startup uh, that you launch. And challenges are, again, across the board, which is why you need to be able to solve problems across the board as well. Uh, but again, it's, it's really day-to-day -day challenges. It could be sales. Uh, it could be the tech not working. It could be scaling your company and the technology that you have. It could be raising capital. And of course, we've gone through kind of everything. Um, so they're, they're kind of, they're different challenges depending on what stage you are in, what you love most about it. I think that the, what I love most about my job is the freedom, but with freedom comes discipline, right? So once you, once you allow yourself to be an entrepreneur, you can work whenever you want, um, do more or less whatever you want, but th there's a certain discipline that's needed for you to be a successful entrepreneur. Um, but I, but I, I think that's that's what I love the most is, is the freedom it gives me. Um, yeah. What opportunities your career has afforded you? Uh, I think one of the biggest um, opportunities it has uh, given me is that I've been able to build a really great network, uh, which is where different and other businesses have come into the picture and different opportunities have come into the pictures because you know as you're out there and you're grinding and hustling and trying to find new, new opportunities and new clients and new partners eventually you'll build a strong enough network where new opportunities will be popping in all the time and so i think the opportunities that my career has given me has been more opportunities more business opportunities in specific what advice would you give younger people if they want to follow your career path, including maybe what subjects they should look into doing. Um, 
Good question. Look, I'll start by saying that entrepreneurship is not for everybody. You know, I think entrepreneurship is very glorified. It's usually put on a pedestal. You know, we talk about Uber and Snapchat and Spotify and all these big companies. But we never really find out, you know, what happens behind the scenes, right? There's a lot of, lot of hard work um, when building your own company. Um, and, you know, it's... it's it's not really a, a, so with a regular job, you know, it's from nine to five and then after that you're good. You don't have to worry about anything. But when you're running a company, especially building a company, you're usually working around the clock 24 seven, right? There's no weekends, there's no, no breaks, no hours sick. So there, there's really, if you fail, it's usually because of you. So what I would tell younger people who are looking into doing what I'm doing is that uh, be self-aware about you know, if you can, if you can work around the clock for five years, right? Um, really try to talk to yourself and really be just self-aware. Uh, you know, would you be able to do the job? Yes or no? And then also, of course, partners is very, very important. So one thing I've learned throughout my career is that I don't really, I almost don't care what I do, but I care about who I do it with. So I could be selling anything, any service, uh, any product, B2B or B2C, as long as I'm doing it with someone I trust and someone I care about and someone I love, um, then whatever I'm selling, whatever I'm selling will be fun to sell, right? So always try to find a business partner. We can be one, two, three, that complements whatever skills you have. So if you know that you're a great numbers guy, but not a good technical guy, you can't build, you know, you can't build tech or write code, then I would find someone who can, you know, write the code for the technology. Or if, you, if you're not a good salesman, find someone who can do all the sales. Um, and in terms of what subjects uh, you would dive into, look, again, the, like this all depends. You could, you know, you could study, uh, um, I, I would say that the, the, the subject that you study almost doesn't matter, right? But what school does is it, it, it builds it builds the discipline that you will need when you once run a company. Uh, so in terms of subjects, obviously, you know, the, the, the I think business economics uh, are two very good subjects to study because they're, they're very broad and they kind of give you a, in, in, kind of an in-depth understanding of uh, what to study and what to do. Um, so yeah, business and economics, obviously if you're looking to run a startup with any specific niche, be it biology or physics, then obviously go for those as well. But look, what subjects you choose at the end of the day does not matter. Uh, you'll learn that when you build a startup, uh, whatever you learn in your textbooks doesn't necessarily span out into, into um, your kind of daily day to day running a business. Uh, but just make sure that you have the, you know, build the discipline in school, uh, make sure that you get stuff done in time. And if you're able to build that fundamental discipline, then it'll be a lot easier to build a business. Thank you very much.